so my name is Lily and today I want to test three survival knives by the company Gerber. So here we have the Prodigy, the Strong Arm and the LMF2 Infantry. And today I want to find out which one of these three is the best urban survival knife. Stay tuned. Alright guys, so here's a more detailed look on all of the three knives here. And before we discuss the differences, I first want to... Um, yeah, tell you about the steels here, which is the same for all of the free knives. So for all of the free knives, they have used um, 420HC steel, which is a very tough steel. It doesn't hold the edge forever, so you have to sharpen it more often. It's a little bit similar to OS8, but um, it's probably even tougher to OS8. And um, yeah, all of the free knives are made from the steel. It's a very sturdy steel and it should bend rather than breaking. Um, yeah, then all of the three knives have about the same length of blade. Uh, so here it's about 12.2 centimeters, and um, this one is a little bit longer with 12.5 centimeters. So they are not really that long, and um, I think it's okay for a carving knife for urban survival, but for a wilderness survival knife, I think they are all a little bit too short because then batoning is. A little bit you know more difficult with a shorter knife so for a wilderness survival knife I would prefer a knife which is a little bit longer like this so that patoning and chopping is easier but you know in a survival situation in an emergency these three knives will definitely work in a survival situation as well but um, with this size I think they are best for urban survival so it's something that you have in your backpack or in your car for self-defense or for you know breaking windows with the uh, hammers here with the emergency hammers and all of three of those knives have a hammer actually so if you take a look at this you can see that the hammers are quite different uh, this is the hammer of the lmf2 infantry it's pretty massive then here's the hammer of the gerber strong arm which looks really nice and this is the hammer of the prodigy and that one looks actually really similar to that of the strong arm so the infantry looks very different but it also looks very pointed so you will definitely smash some windows if you have to get out of your car or out of the bus or out of the train uh, in case of an accident now what all of the three knives have is a proper finger guard and also they have this uh, thumb rail with a ridge and yeah some people like that others don't because then you cannot really place your thumb straight on the back of the blade so you always have to go over the ridge here and carve like this um, yeah it's really personal preference so it adds a little bit of more security if you have both a finger guard and this this rail here um, this ridge so that you don't slide over but some people don't like having this on top here because then they cannot carve uh, very easily by putting their thumbs on the blade here. So yeah, some people like that, others don't and that's okay uh, because everybody is different and has different needs. Okay, so now let's take a look at the serrations of the knife. Uh, so I got all of the knives with serrations. Um, usually in wilderness survival knives I don't like serrations because they leave an unclean cut. Uh, but in an urban survival situation, I would really like to have serrations because uh, with serrations you can cut string better, you can cut plastic handcuffs better and other materials that you might have to cut, maybe your seat belt. So serrations are great for urban survival. For wilderness survival, I really dislike them and I don't want to have them. Also, they are a little bit more difficult to sharpen than just a fine edge and um, yeah it takes more work to get them sharp but once they are sharp they will stay sharp for a long time and even if the serrations will dull with the time they will even cut and still slice and you will still get um, the work done so serrations have pros and cons and it really depends on what you want again in a survival knife now because my intention is um, that these knives are used for urban survival. I got all of the three knives with serrations. All right, so now let's start with a simple carving test.
All right, so all of the three knives came about with the same sharpness and um, they did a good job in carving with the fine edge. With the serrations, it didn't carve that well. So for carving, you definitely want to take the fine edge. Uh, with the serrations, it was a little bit different. Um, yeah, I mean, in a survival situation, you probably still can get fine shavings with the serrations as well, but it's definitely working better with the fine edge. Also, all of the knives are pretty thick. So if you take a look at the back here, um, yeah, they have a good thickness and also the tip looks very, very stable. Look at that. So it's a very stable tip. And now we will conduct a simple tip test and then we will find out uh, if the tip will break or not. knives have survived the tip test without breaking uh, it's no wonder because the design is really sturdy so you won't break the tip off easily and they pretty much have the same knife design so they have a saber grind and then they have a really small false wedge on top so small that it doesn't really weaken the tip and this way the tip stays strong but still you have a good uh, piercing capability. So I really like the design of the tip here. They've done a good job. Okay, now let's see if we can take the knives in reverse grip as well. So if you take it like this and put your thumb on, is it possible or not? Uh, with the Prodigy it's not possible because you're going to hurt the inside joint of your thumb. Ah. So if you step like this, you will definitely feel it in your thumb. So maybe it's better to put the thumb across the, the pommel, like so. This is better. But I would definitely not put the thumb on top of the emergency hammer. So um, like this, it's okay though. Now let's check out the strong arm in reverse. Yeah, so here we have the same problem. If you are going to step like this, you are going to feel it. So maybe here it's also better to come onto the pommel from the side. And then you can step like this. Now the LMF2 has quite a different emergency hammer. Let's see how we can take it. Okay, this will really hurt. So you can also take it here from the side. But it's a little bit more awkward than the other ones, I have to say, because there's this Rich here. I mean, you can still take it, so it's okay. But the other ones feel a little bit more comfortable. Okay, now let's do a destruction test of the emergency hammer. So all of the knives did a good job in hammering. Uh, we can see a little bit of damage, uh, but it's really just minor. You can also see damage on the plastic handle a little bit, but this is normal because uh, the iron is so hard. And this is the damage on the Gerber strongarm. So here it's the same picture. The paint has come off and the plastic handle is a little bit damaged. And this is the Gerber LMF. Now here it's a little bit different because the steel emergency hammer is actually as big as the plastic handle. So um, here the plastic 
cannot really get damaged because uh, the pommel is so big. And yeah, so all in all I have to say, this is a great emergency hammer and it's also probably uh, one of the more pointier ones. So if you want to have a knife that has a great emergency hammer, I think that maybe this one is the best in design. But I gotta say that the other two have a great emergency hammer as well. And you're going to smash windows with those as well here. Okay, before I move on to the destruction test, I first want to show you the sheaths that the knives are coming in. So this here is the Gerber Prodigy knife and sheath. It comes in an ambidextrous sheath and you can push it out easily. The sheath has a rubbery feel. It feels, it doesn't feel cheap, but also it doesn't feel like super expensive, but it seems to do the trick. So it seems to be a very sturdy sheath, which has a more rubbery material at the sides here. And yeah, it snaps in okay doesn't fall out by itself and it comes with two security buckles uh, the back is nice because it's molly compatible so that's cool um, and also it comes with a very sturdy belt loop so I really like the sheath here it's okay and it definitely um, has a good quality so this is the sheath of the Gerber Prodigy then here we have the sheath of the Gerber Stronger. Now this one looks really cool, I have to say. Um, it snaps in a little bit better, so you need more force to get the knife out. It also doesn't fall out of the sheath, which is important. So you can even mount it uh, upside down on your, um, on your backpack, for example. Then also it comes with this special mounting plate so that you can wear it horizontally on your belt, for example. And then you can also wear it on your belt with this dangler here. Yeah, so I gotta say, I'm not a fan of danglers. I don't like it when the knife um, uh, goes back and forth with every step so much. So that sucks a little bit that they have made a dangler out of this belt loop here. So I think uh, that the sheath of the Prodigy is much better because it doesn't, you know, move around that much. So you have to imagine when you are running through the forest, the knife is going to do this on your belt and that really sucks. So then you have to fasten it to your leg with another strap, which you can do if you want to. So yeah, I rather want to have this sheath actually. Although I have to say that the casing of this sheath looks much, much better. So it really sucks that they haven't taking this nylon part for this sheath because this would have been really awesome. Okay, next on, this is the sheath of the LMF2. Yeah, this snaps in very good as well. You won't get this out. Um, then you have two security buckles again. It's ambidextrous as well, like all of the other ones too. So that's nice. And in here you even have a little bit of a sharpening um, stone. So I believe it's a carbide sharpener. It's not the best for your blade though. So I would not use it um, if I had a better stone at home. Uh, this is just for emergency use. But still it's great that they have installed some kind of sharpener. Uh, the broader sheet does not come with a sharpener. Yeah, and at the back side it's the same pretty much. So here we have a molly compatible sheath and we have a proper belt loop that is sturdy. So yeah, the sheath is fine. It looks okay and it holds the knife tightly. Okay, now it's time to do the destruction test. Okay, these are the knives after the brick test and 
yeah you can see there's some damage of course every knife gets damaged with the brick test so here we see some rolling edges but no chips and the back has a little bit of damage too but it's not too bad the handle is still okay with the Gerber Prodigy now let's take a look at the Gerber strong arm so here we have the same picture no wonder because it's the same steel uh -huh. here the serrations are a little bit more damaged and the back pretty much looks the same and this is the Gerber LMF it has some damage at the back like the others and at the edge just like the others but here you can also see that the handle is damaged so look at that so this is quite a serious damage here um, yeah probably not the best handle okay now let's move on to the iron bar test Alright, so these are the knives after the iron bar test and all of them have survived the test and yes, I had knives breaking on the iron bar so it's a really tough test. Now the Prodigy has taken some more damage but it's still looking very good. Now here is the Gerber strong arm. We have the same damage here. So for the most part all of the edges have rolled over and I cannot see any chips. Yeah, the LMF looks pretty much the same. So this is no surprise because the steel is the same and they have the same uh, damage pattern. Uh, but still, I mean, if you look at this knife you can still use it if you sharpen it up again you can still use all of these knives. Uh, what I felt when doing the chopping on the brick and on the iron bar was that um, I had a lot of vibration back here, but there was no vibration here, which was funny. So now I want to cut open the handles and I want to see what's inside of uh, the knives and if this is full tang or stick tang or whatever. So let's take a look. Okay, so this is the stick tang of the Gerber Prodigy. So here you can see that um, the blade is slowly converting into a stick tang, which is about as thick as my finger. And it is not straight, so it has a couple of curls in it and bends, like this one here. And then the farther back you get the thinner the stick tank gets. Yeah, it has these bends here and here and I think uh, it's intentional. So uh, they basically make bends and odd shapes of the stick tank so that the plastic handle um, sticks onto the tank better. So here at the back the tank is only 11 or 12 millimeters wide anymore. So that's not really thick at the back here anymore. Here in the front it's thicker and then you can see it's getting thinner and thinner. Okay, so here we have the Gerber strong arm cut open. Um, yeah, we get about the same picture as with the other one. So actually, 
I think that the blades of these two are almost identical. We also have a thicker tang here, which then fins out at the end. Here in the handle I can see a couple of air bubbles in the plastic. And what's also very interesting is that this inner part of the plastic is hard and the outer part is very soft, like uh, rubber from a bicycle tire. Um, it's actually the same here with this knife. Uh, the Prodigy is also hard at the inside and only the coating, which is about 2 millimeters thick, is the soft plastic here. Yeah, so these two blades are actually really similar. Uh, the only difference is that the tang with the Prodigy is higher up and the pommel comes out here and the strong arm here has the stick tang a little bit more in the middle. But other than that, um, they have about the same stick tang. It has the same width at the back and here in the middle. And it's pretty much almost the same knife. Last but not least, here's the Gerber LMF and I have to say I made some surprising findings here. So with the other two knives it was really hard to get the handle off. It was almost impossible, I needed an iron saw. Here it was relatively easy to pry off the handle. I used a screwdriver and also the plastic here in the middle is different, it's harder and more brittle. You know, actually, maybe this is the same plastic as this one here, but it seems as if the two handle scales are just made from two pieces instead of uh, completely melting the plastic over the handle. And um, you can see here that this piece is not directly connected to the other side. I mean, they have used some glue here, but it's not directly connected. And this is why I could get off the handle so easily. So this here is definitely one piece and you need an iron saw to cut away the handle. And here it's really easy to get off the handle scale. Then the next surprising find is that the stick tang of the LMF2 is actually much shorter than the other two knives that I have here. So uh, the tang stops here, which is not too long. Um, and also it's not connected to the emergency hammer. So it's just, there's this gap here, as you can see. And then the emergency hammer is just, um, yeah, stuck inside of the plastic rubber handle. Um, so this is not, uh, I, don't, I don't think this is good. So I think that the hammer can break off or break out and you lose the hammer if you do not connect it directly to the tank. So as you can see this is held in place with a bolt and the hammer is held in place with a bolt as well. Yeah and this is the explanation why I didn't feel any awkward vibration at the back of the bummer here because it's just simply not connected to um, the knife blade. Okay I just took the knives out of the handle. This is the LMF with the short tang and actually I did some research so apparently um, the gap here is made so that you have an electrical gap so in case that a pilot um, that has crashed has to cut himself out of electrical wires which can happen then uh, you won't get electrocuted if you hold the knife like this because of course the pommel here is steel um, so this is apparently why they have designed um, the Gerber LMF with an electrical gap um, still I think it makes the knife very very weak um, I would never design it like this uh, I'm also not recommend the knife like this because the handle scales 
are far less um, of high quality than, for example, the handle scales of the Gerber uh, Strongarm here. So the handle scales got easily damaged. Uh, I could pry them off very quickly. Um, and actually, the other knives insulate as well against electrical shocks. So if you take the Gerber Strongarm, for example, you can see that your hand will never touch the small emergency hammer which is at the back. And the same goes for the Prodigy. So if I take the knife like this, I will not touch the pommel because the plastic is in the way and also here I'm far enough away from the blade as well with my hand. So the Gerber with this handle is um, protecting me from electrical shocks as well, as well as the Prodigy. So I think, yes, okay, they have made this knife for um, protection of electrical shocks, okay? Um, if you like this, then go ahead and buy it. I do not like it. I myself am going to get the Prodigy and the Gerber Strongarm because I like those better. And also I won't find myself in a situation where I'm in a downed helicopter um, having to cut myself through electrical wires. So I think that we can agree that the Prodigy and the Gerber Strongarm are quite similar when it comes to blade length, blade shape and stick tang. I think that both of the handles are great. Honestly, I like this one better because it looks more cool. But actually the handle of the Prodigy has a more distinct finger guard and more distinct um, thumb guard. So this is probably the safer knife of the two. I mean the, the strong arm is also a very good uh, handle and quite safe. Okay, last but not least I want to show you the prices of these knives. So for the Prodigy I paid 100 euros. For the strong arm I paid 115 and for the infantry I paid 120 euros. Um, of course here in Europe the prices are higher so in the US you probably will find them at a cheaper price. But this is how much I paid for this video. Now for ourselves I'm going to get the Gerber strong arm for my car and the Prodigy for my spouse's car because um, we are looking for some cheaper knives that we just can have laying around in our cars and that stay in our cars. And you can also um, put these knives into your EDC bag or get home bag. Um, yeah, I think they, are, they do great in a urban survival situation for sure. So these two definitely get a recommendation for me. I will put all of the links of these knives in the description below and if you want to support my channel it would be awesome if you buy one of these knives via my Amazon links below. Alright guys, so thank you for watching and stay tuned till next time.